Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see a lot of familiar faces this morning. We missed you last time. <laughs> we'll call the call to order uh, the meeting, and uh, we're, we will do roll call first. Raymond Camina, present. Judith Gutierrez, present. Bethany Luna, Madam Chair, um, she is on a business trip in Houston, and she asked to be excused. Jamie Martinez, present. Marisa Ramirez, present. Alejandro Villarreal, present. I move that we excuse Bethany uh, from this meeting. And if we can also uh, move for the, the excuse absences for the last couple of meetings that we didn't have a quorum. The December 6th was Marisa Ramirez, myself, Raymond Camina, and Bethany Luna. And the January meeting was Rebecca Sepulveda. So stated by our chair, and then we'll move to that effect that we excuse them for the meeting. Thank you. So now we go. We need a second for the motion. I'll second. Okay, thank you. Now we move over to the approval of the <coughs> for the November 1st, uh, 2018 meeting. <coughs> well, I'm sorry. Uh, to introduce, we have Jorge Dragusinovic. He is a representative from a media outlet from Monterrey, from La Carretera, and uh, yes. he's here with us today, visiting together with someone, our sales representative from uh, Casa Levy. Bienvenidos. Okay, so we have Jorge Dragusinovic, who's the president of the Casa Levy. I move that we um, approve the, the minutes of uh, November 1st, if there are no additions, deletions, or corrections. I can second it. Motion moved to approve the move of the meeting uh, for the November 1st, 2018. Any public comments? So then we move over to reviewing the year to date financial statement, <coughs> which is on page six, page six and seven. Six and seven. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we are starting the second. Um, quarter of our fiscal year. Well, we're already in the middle of our the second quarter for our fiscal year, and uh, we are um, during December, which is November. As you remember, we were a little bit low on our actual, but that balanced out with the previous month. So between November and December, we uh, came up to the we we had good numbers between those those two months. Not based on the projection, but based on the actuals. Good. And you'll see a little bit more detail um, based on also the occupancy in my report in the following. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the financial? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, moving to. Uh, to review the January activity reports. The first one is the Eileen um, Damos' report, which is a director's report for 2019. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my report is on page eight. Uh, a lot of the focus during the month of January was uh, in preparation to the Austin legislative trip. We had uh, some of the things that we, that we help with is obviously anything that has to do with promotion. And this year we developed an app so that all the attendees to both the Austin and the Washington trips uh, have the opportunity to um, go around the meetings, anything, any, any, um, during the day, they don't need the, 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 their binder, they don't need to have anything. <coughs> they have all the information in the panel of their hand, they have all their information in their phone, and including <coughs> all the of agendas, including schedules, everything that they need for the, for a successful meeting. 
And um, the other thing that I want to highlight is the Laredo Burden Festival that's going on right now. This morning, uh, we sent off um, uh, probably 12 different vehicles going to ranches and parks around the city and around the county. Mm -hmm. And so this year, they have about 155 people signed up for the event, which is the cap. That it's it's a cap that they can they can uh, work with. Uh, yeah. It's a boutique um, <coughs> festival they call it, and it's been very successful. Yesterday was the opening ceremony of the Birds in the Brush uh, art exhibit uh, for the community, and it was very well. Uh, I can tell you that uh, don't, I know firsthand that it was uh, very successful. My daughter-in-law, who's an art teacher at uh, um, Parales uh, Middle School. Oh, I saw several from from. They well, all got bought. Do you know that? Oh, uh, yes. oh, except, ex except one that the the, the, the student did want to sell. They want to sell. Wow. Yeah. But all of the art. Uh, so I was so was happy. I was telling them I, I bought. Not not from that from another group. I bought one. <laughs> and they were so pretty. They the were world. just very very pretty. The only thing that I have to say is that it's nice to, you know, to be able to sell. But the the students, you know, don't make that much money. And mm -hmm. I think the Center for the Arts takes thirty percent. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if maybe we could talk about that percentage. I think it's a bit. They they have a negotiation. We we don't we're not part of that negotiation. So that what we do with the with the Loretta Burning Festival, our partic participation is mostly we fund the event, but anything that has to do with logistics, with <coughs> organizing the actual event, that's risk. Well, Rio Grande International Study Center uh, and the Montemucho Audubon Society. We can certainly bring that up to their well, attention. Well, because it's for the students. I mean, they mm -hmm. take you know their time. You know, there's their their yeah, creativity, and, nice. and they're yeah. very they were very nice. I mean, to they say you know that were really very, very nice, nice and we can certainly bring that to the attention of the because of the they, they sell it at thirty dollars. I mean, mm -hmm. they take 30, 30, 35. That's mm -hmm. nine dollars almost. You know, just yeah. And so anyway, I just pieces. wondered if there was something we could do, or did, we, you know, we could can, be done about it. I can definitely bring it up to the to that committee, to the to the festival committee. Okay, mm -hmm. right. it's for the students. You know? yeah. Art supplies are expensive. Yeah, they are. Probably broke even after the painting the canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not time. Not time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just it's so that's the only thing that my my daughter in law came home and said last night. I said, yeah. you know, that's a very good point. Yeah, no, I'll definitely bring it up. And, and they have, so they have two more days to, well, this is the first day of trips. And it's Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then Saturday night is a closing banquet. And that they was have, that? Uh, no, this year it's going to be an American Legion. Oh. And so I really um, recommend. The, the speakers, they have guides, they have speakers, and every year they've been amazing. I mean, they, they, they've had people uh, specialize in, in penguins, <coughs> any type of bird. They're, they always have great, great speakers. I so think more and more, I mean, as it, this takes off, <coughs> you know, it's getting more attention mm -hmm. and more people involved, you know, so. I think, and I was talking to, to Mr. Miller yesterday, I believe that the Burning Festival is one event that's a very good example of an event that the city started and then the community took over and they just made it so successful. Yeah. I think that's that's a good example of something that, that the way it should be. Once we started, we helped start an event and then the community takes over and it's just, I mean, they grew it. We had, I think the largest number of people we had was 80. And they already grew it to the max, so I think it's it's been a very successful venture. It started adventure. very very small from what it I started can remember. Very very they yeah. They the hotel, mm -hmm. and now it's like. Really and now really they have big, thirteen vans going on. Do they have it day. at this time of the year because of the migration, migration of the birds? Yes. That this that yes. they you know that's where mm -hmm. they can get and identify all of these rare birds. And birds. this year uh, during the Christmas bird count, they saw species that had never been seen in this region. And so they're really excited about the, the bird count this year. They're really excited about the possibility of what they can see. Um, and they have people from many, many countries. That they have uh, somebody from Brazil. They have all over the US. They have Canada. And they have, I think, Mexico, too. So every year, That's they nice. have people from different mm -hmm. locations. And we have a lot of the winter Texans <coughs> coming here. Um, <coughs> and uh, they're obviously based in, in the valley during the winter. 
but they come here for the, for the birding festival. So. That's good. Mm -hmm. And on the second page of my report, you can find the hotel occupancy. So uh, I added November and December. We got those numbers for this uh, November a little bit later, so I haven't been able to to share them. But you can see that we're consistently, and this is a benchmark. This is just a sample of our market. This is not our whole market, but it's a benchmark uh, report. And you can see that we're consistently above our um, competitors, the ones that we're comparing us. We are being compared against, which is McAllen, Mission, Park, Harlingen, um, Mercedes, Brownsville, South Pauline, and Corpus. Can you give us an, exa an example, Eileen, as to how to see the report as far as like if we look at ourselves at Brownsville? The yes. 28.2% uh, in 2018 is. So that's the ours. occupancy. Uh -huh. The the 58. If you see the first five, mm -hmm. and that's why I added 74.6 is the total for the zone one, two, three, and four and five. So 74.6, the number that I put in the in the, in the oh, copy okay, gotcha. is the total that's for the Laredo. Average. That's the average. That's the that's average for average. Laredo and for December 76.9. That's our average. And then you see the average for McAllen was 65, Mission 57, and so on. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So you can do it uh, comparing it to the last year, right? We're comparing on that last year. Yes. It's, it's, it's a double The 17 and 18. Two yeah. years. We're comparing 17, 18, and we're comparing Laredo to our oh, benchmark yes. destinations. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good information to, to see how we compare with, with other with our competition mm -hmm. within South Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know if there's any questions regarding the. And again, this is a sample. This doesn't include every single hotel in, in Laredo. It's a sample uh, for the report. It does include about half of our total inventory, about 2,200 rooms in the report. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it the largest? I'm sorry. What is, the avail what is available? What is the 4,000 rooms, and that includes all the hotels. Hotels, motels, right? Yeah. Hotel, yeah. motels. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we usually work with between 22 and, and 3,000 rooms that we know we have um, influence, if you want to call it that way, that we can work with. So hotel rooms that we can actually go out and sell. Mm -hmm. uh, the other are independent properties, are, and they're mostly used by our logistics business. And so we don't necessarily, when we go out and we do our, our sales projections, we know that those, those uh, hotels are not necessarily going to be um, included or they're not going to be as uh, seeked out. Not that we don't include them, we have all of them in, in our list, but they're not going to be as seeked out by our meetings market or our leisure market as, as other hotels. But we, in our list, when we list so they the look hotels, for AAA or you know, whatever it is that they look for the, exactly. know, the so ratings for the... They, for the they look for flag, they look for um, larger properties. Now, we do when we're listing hotels and we're promoting hotels, we promote every single one of them. So in our visitor guide, in our listings, in there. our website, we have every hotel in the city, all 4,000 um, rooms. Uh, but when it comes to reports, especially sales reports, we focus on those that we have mm -hmm. a, a... So you're saying there's 2,000 how many? In this report, there's 2,200 rooms that are being um, counted. Compared to uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. In total, in the city, we have 4,000. And that's because you have the information based on, on those 2,200 rooms, right? rooms that yes, we gather the information. We buy a report, oh, and sorry. it's a star report. So we have two reports that we purchase. One is source, mm -hmm. and that one is it's based on the, it's a quarterly report. And it's based on the information that the hotels provide to the controller's office. Controller's office. Um, and then this one is a report that's much more detailed. And so for this one, we buy like very specific reports, like benchmark report. Where this year we're adding a um, event-specific event. report, so that we can see the pickup that we have in events like WBCA, mm -hmm. like sister cities. So that we can zoom in and get a little bit more detailed data mm -hmm. that can help us make better decisions. 
And mm -hmm. in that report, of the main, the, most of the hotels that we have their listings, they subscribe to it. So right. they're, uh -huh. they're, they're like we, we have that. Yes. That's, yeah. so that's, 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 that's how we get those hotel. because a lot mm -hmm. of the other ones that are not there, they don't pay those fees because you know there's fees that you have to pay and you see your competitors. We don't say exactly uh, in detail too much, but I know as the hotel, they are able to see what their competitors are doing within their city. If so if it's a Marriott property, they could look at other Marriott's within two miles or a mile, and they see what they're doing. Uh, if it's a Hilton or and even if it's an independent, you could see your competitors. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a really good report. Uh, it's real data. It's mm -hmm. uh, so. And then we use it to compare with our destinations. And we usually get it like 45 days after the month. <coughs> Another <coughs> element that we have in this report that we presented to the, the committee and, and uh, other meetings, it's the day by day. So when we, and that has helped us identify, for example, we know very well our, um, when it's the air show, we're going to see a peak in the, in the when it's sister cities, we're going to see a peak. But then we had peaks that we had to go back and say, well, what happened this weekend? One well, example is the Luis Miguel concert. Like, we had to go around the, the, the <laughs> office and it's like, does anyone remember what happened this weekend? <coughs> and I Googled May 26, 2000 Event. uh -huh, events in Laredo, Luis Miguel. So we know Luis Miguel brought hotel rooms, uh, Mana brings hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. So that report, because it's a daily report, yeah, it gives us an interesting enough, enough we're talking to see uh, to the arena people that manage it, and they're saying that was our highest grossing event ever in re record history. So they said that they made, because we usually we lose on concerts, uh -huh. yeah. and so that they made over a, a million, three, three thousand dollars in that event alone. Wow. wow. Yes. Well, it, it <laughs> also <laughs> gives you yeah. what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that report allows us to see yeah. uh, per day and then now with a new report that we're getting, we're going to go even deeper. And by the way, they're coming back, so we need to prepare. Oh, <laughs> 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 He's coming back. He's <laughs> coming back. He's coming back. He's coming And that's why we also have Samuel, um, that Samuel is visiting with all the travel agencies and the operators in Monterrey. And they also have a very good relationship with our media over there. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any questions? Very good. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to highlight uh, regarding the the Austin trip, I had a chance to meet with the well, as a group with the executive director for the Texas Historical Commission, um, and the objective was to find additional funds because we we have the co-op uh, program that we're we're starting with uh, Webb County Heritage. But I want to see. I want to thank you for that because it's very important that we do get together to, to feature. To, yeah, you know, because I think that one of the things that vi when visitors come to our community, they want to know what we have as far as historical mm -hmm. museums and you know what yes. they want to know about our community. It's a very very old community with a lot of rich history. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's one of the things that they want to um, we want to be able to do more of it. And we see that potential in that definitely adding that to our to our marketing. And so I wanted to talk to the executive director to see if there are additional funds that we can maybe grant or anything that we can use to match what we're putting in so that we can get further in the list of, of projects that we have with what County Heritage. So they gave us a couple of ideas that we can follow up on. And so it was a very, uh, it was a fruitful meeting with and I think, you know, one of the things that La Posada, and I, I don't know if they're doing it already, but they have the Republic of the Rio Grande there, which was, uh, th that was the, that was where they were situated. Yeah. I mean, it was, we were a country, you know, for yeah. quite, however many days, 287, whatever yeah. it was, but we were our own country, and nobody can claim that, mm -hmm. nobody in mm -hmm. Texas. Yeah. So we are not six flags, we're seven yeah. flags, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that, you know, could be something that we can talk about and maybe, you know, mm -hmm. expound on that. And you yeah, know. that's definitely part of the 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 plan with Web County Heritage to feature the Republic of the Rio, Rio Grande uh, uh, even more because we do we do the seven flags, but we don't focus on on specific on why, so why is it exactly. So we want to make sure that we're using that uniqueness and all the elements that we have. In, as part of our product to to enhance it, so yeah, definitely. So between the meeting with historical commission and they gave they pointed us out to to a couple of um, 
uh, opportunities and a couple of resources that we can certainly follow up on. Mm -hmm. The hotel does contribute to maintaining mm -hmm. the public of the Rio Grande. Yes. You know, doing the roofing, the inside. The inside you can't do very much because it's all made out of that. It's very clay. Like oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. so yeah. And it's very, very delicate. Uh -huh. um, but, yes. but that's one of the uniqueness of this building that it is, yeah. has been preserved exactly. as it was when it was constructed. Yeah. I mean, it is, yeah. it's limestone. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, it's very, very, you know, it's, it's very delicate. Mm -hmm. But it, it is uh, something that, you know, it just really blows your mind to think, you know, when this place was constructed and what the significance of this building is. Yeah. You know, and I think that's one of the things we need to you know, to at, explore it. At one time, the there were doing feature. some work on the road right in front of the hotel, right there, where there were like yeah, so they some massive yes. uh, breaking down the, the, the cement and so forth. So yeah. it did some damage there to they the it cracked it cracked yeah. 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 Wow. So it's, it's very important mm -hmm. that there's not anything can just happen, you know. Right there. Yeah, you just so try to, yeah. you know, just to try to protect it as much as right. you can. Yeah. 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 And people go by there every day and they say, you know, it's just, but it's not, it's just so cute. They just don't know that it's a museum. It does, they, yeah. well. <laughs> the uniqueness of the uniqueness of it. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Pues que bueno. No, the Republic of Rio Grande. Oh, museum. I'm so glad that you talked to the people from their churches. Yeah, we had a, a good meeting with, with Mr. Waltz, because at least the executive director of the historical commission. Fantastic. Thank you, Amy. We move over to the sales manager's report, which is for you. Good morning, Madam Chair. My report's on page 9. Uh, this month, <coughs> month of January, we had a, uh, not my Nona, myself, and together with Pat Norton from the Alley Shops and Dennis Gutierrez from the Max Golf Course. We traveled to McAllen for the Winter Texan, and it was a very successful event. The first day, we had over 6,000 people that showed up to the, to the expo. And then the second day, we had a little bit over 4,000. So in total, it was about 11,000 people winter Texans. Uh, wow. Within an hour, we gave uh, 500 bags of our bags, and they were one of the, the highlight of the show. Uh, we always give really nice backpacks. There, it's you could use it as a backpack or just a regular standard bag. And um, but people were going crazy for that. The outlets was actually giving some little <coughs> shoes for your cell phone, phone, cell phone, yeah, cell phone holders. Oh, oh my cool. God, those were a hit. Even men were going for that. <laughs> so, um, but you know, Pat being the first time that she went to this show, um, and uh, and obviously she's not, she's from the outlet, but she's not from Laredo. Uh, her, I think her office is in Chicago. Uh, it was nice. Uh, that she was able to to see everything that was going on, and uh, okay, okay. I've known Robert for a long time. Our, our co-interim city, city manager. manager. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. I'm so glad that you all are. Oh, we get along. <laughs> <laughs> successful event uh, we uh, being that Pat was the first time and actually the alley shops never uh, come there so they were promoting a play and stay in shop package uh, so and then of course the golf course they he was able to get some groups uh, within all the way to March uh, you know from 20 to, to uh, 40 golfers that are going to be coming in for the weekends um, so it was a very successful event uh, we've seen the increase of that uh, as well for the Burning Festival. We promote a lot the Burning Festival, the WBCA events. Uh, we give the By George the red card. So, and then we give a free uh, trip to Laredo for the Burning Festival. So, man, people were, you could have seen the acrylic box. There were people going crazy signing up because it's literally the hotel stay for four days, uh, the whole package for all the burning for one individual. 
Really? So yeah, wow. so it's about nine hundred to a thousand dollar value that we give in kind. Obviously, the good thing is that they, one day one you, one wins and they bring friends, so yeah. <laughs> that's how we get them. So you know, and they come shopping, they come all that stuff. So yeah, no, they never do. Especially these that are older people, so they tend to travel with uh, more individuals, friends, and uh, spouses. Yeah, and then they get yeah. So so it was really good. Uh, it was very successful. Uh, Pat was really happy that he was there. She actually ended up flying in from Chicago all the way to the back to McAllen. And, uh, and then she ended up going to see other markets. She wanted to see her competitors for the, the, the outlet shops. So it was, uh, she did a little bit more cross promotion as well. And uh, so very, very successful. Um, and uh, we, we already signed up for next year as well. It's a good event for us uh, because it's a driving market for us, the Winter Texans. And, uh, and then this month, uh, the other thing that we're getting ready is for all the different board Olympics tournaments that we're gonna be taking place from baseball, uh, softball, uh, there's the boys golf, so there's three different tournaments within the whole Washington's birthday celebration that main week uh, and we uh, we want to thank the hotels that have uh, been helping us with uh, with the hotels and special rates for the groups because uh, there's we're competing with so many things so there's a lot of things going on uh, during that big weekend of, of WBCA uh, for the parade and and and, uh, and the all the other events going on. So those are the big things that I was working on uh, for this particular month. If there's any other questions that you guys uh, may have. What? I don't have a question on that, but I, I just did want to, uh, you know, maybe touch a little bit on the outlet uh, shop mm -hmm. and, you know, to see if, uh, you know, they're, well, like, if you know through sales tax, um, you know, how their sales are going? Or? Not through sales tax, but I did have conversation with the outlet and December was a good month for them. They did see a good number of uh, shoppers um, during the holidays. Uh, I haven't received the, the sales tax numbers to compare and, and have a hard, hard um, image of, of that, but the, the feedback from them was that the holidays were, were uh, they saw an increase in their sales during the holidays. And I, and I mentioned that because Sunday I was watching the um, local show that they mm -hmm. have, you know, from Jerry Garza and all that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have at the end of the show a segment, you know, tell me what you're what thinking about, you know, what, what, what mm -hmm. you, can't you know, can't stop thinking about. You mm -hmm. can't stop thinking about. Mm -hmm. And Noraida Negron was saying that she had gone to the outlet mall for, and for the first time, and I was, what? <laughs> and she said that it was during the week, and it was, she says, it's beautiful out there. I just don't know what's going on. She says there was zero people. During and, the week. And that's what I think that needs yeah. to be worked on. I think, you know, people from uh, Monterrey and all of that, maybe the advertising. I don't know what it is. Well, during the week, we, we don't get the, the traveler. We get them during the weekend. Um, and the outlet has been, as you know, they've been working on trying to get the local for the during the week. But Shop, you know, I just shopping. don't see the advertisement that, that should be going on because the advertising, you know, hits that when they hit, when it's on television and you're seeing it and seeing it and seeing. It, I mean, it's just it's just a reminder. You know, you need to go. Have you been? And I would venture to say most of the people in the room have not gone. Judy, I I brought it up at one of the meetings um, when they were here, and I said. To attract the people from downtown, the, the you know the people that work downtown, they have to start offering that free parking for on, in the covered area yeah. because nobody wants to park all the way at the bottom. If you have an hour lunch, you want to get a you know ten minute, fifteen minute lunch, and then shop the other. Especially if it's empty and during the week. <laughs> it's exactly. it's empty, you know, use it that way, you know, use it to your advantage. How many people from, from the, the, that work in the north the go to the mall the because they have food mm -hmm. and then, you know, they go in and buy whatever. I, I think like they it. did extend something on the, um, the parking time, time, but not they went the hours and hours and the, hour. No, but it's, but it's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Still at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. The covered area will still charge you as soon as you yeah, walk Exactly. So, it yeah. should be something to be considered because it's keeping a lot of people away when they could be shopping there. And there's a lot of good things. There's uh, yeah. stores 
Noraida yeah. was mentioning it. She says they cut a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. says, you know, and they keep adding stores. That's yeah. what she said. They have new, new ones. So. Yeah, and, and I never watch that. They yeah. do have that lull during the week. <coughs> on a Friday after work or on a weekend, and there's people. Yeah. And But you okay. notice that that's not the local. Yeah. That's well, they may as well close all week long and just open through Thursday to yeah. Sunday. I mean, come on. What I noticed too during the Christmas holiday, and I didn't realize that until I was there. <laughs> that they have the permisos yes mm -hmm. oh yeah so yes. the line was all the way to like michael course yeah. did you mm -hmm. not yeah. yeah so those people would get out of line we'll like the family out. and they would shop and then come back okay. so mm -hmm. And the stores yeah. are going to offer discount coupons to those. Yeah, so that was so nice. that's that's proven to be very successful. Because yeah. they yeah. have kept it. Uh, maybe they, maybe they yeah. have yeah. 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 Then, um, I don't know. Maybe a they have they have that, and that's all the visitors, and a lot of them because we've surveyed them, and, mm -hmm. and also we've uh, aprovechamos. We've sí. surveyed them when they're in <laughs> online in line, and one of the things that they t told us is. So most of them didn't know about the outlet, so that's the perfect um, excuse to get them there. Once they're there, they have to be in line for at least they have to half an hour or they 40 have to minutes. They do more advertising. They have to promote, promote, promote. I mean, if they're, they're not coming, you need to draw them in. And the way to draw them in is by promoting your, your, you know, your, your merchandise, your merchandise, your product. I mean, that's the way. You do it. Yeah. Well, I see you advertise all the time, and I'm sure your sales have gone up. We're looking at brands that for a different route, a trolley going around, circling, maybe stopping here or having a place of location to park, then going around, dropping them off at La Posada, going to the <coughs> Alpha Mall, coming back. They did the study as far as how long it would take. It would take about 20 minutes to do the, the entire route, right? So obviously there's shorter uh, time per periods for mm -hmm. stopping. But one of them is for the outlet mall, and so they're working things through right now and, and trying to get a smaller, uh, an initial trolley to be able to do that, to be able to go around the streets of downtown. So we are looking at that, hopefully for the local traveler to I just worry that you know these uh, merchants are gonna not be making it, and then yes. you know, that would be a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. catastrophe. Yeah. The negative is in, from the very beginning charging for parking, even though they gave two hours, not right. three hours. But just from the very beginning. Yeah, just that whole. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, the people don't, don't want to pay. Was I parked in the. And then I got a ticket in The other half aren't, oh so you might as well go to the mall. Yeah. Because the same prices as the Academy or the mall. But only half the stores are real outlet stores. They just happen to be a store at an outlet mall. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something that needs to be. Yeah. Is I went to, I went to one place and I got excited because I found some dates for fifty nine ninety nine <coughs> on special twenty percent off. And you go to the mall. They were forty nine dollars the same ones at Academy. <laughs> <laughs> or like I wanted to price. guess. And it was like everything on sale, and they were reduced. There was a pair of jeans that were reduced from sixty nine ninety nine to sixty four ninety nine. It was like five bucks. <laughs> Half of your lunch there. Anybody yeah. 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 Thirty bucks I paid for parking. <laughs> Thank you. Well, anyway, I just wanted to, 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 to you know express my concern, you know, with yeah. regard to the outlet mall because mm -hmm. I prefer to fail. Mm -hmm. No, we don't want it to fail. No. I mean, it's just a lot of investment. Ahorita nos vamos todos al mundo. Just say that. Please do. Many to Thursday, no charge for parking. I think the should be at the other. Everything free, like you said. We have the meeting at the other. It's a big picture. No, we're going to be here every time. Because it's not only your lunch, it's a change. We've got some decision makers in there. Yeah, at least those, those yeah. restaurants can make a little bit of money. Even if it's even if it's free parking from eleven to two, you know, uh -huh. to get the people to the lunch crowd. Mm -hmm. How many people work in the federal building? How many people work at the courthouse? How many people work for the city? You know, we'll reach out to Verizon to offer that suggestion. 
And for them to advertise more through, through the local markets, I mean, the television, I mean, the, you know, the newspaper or whatever else, you know, they, you know, whatever social media. They're relying on word of mouth. Is what they're doing. Yeah. And you know, unfortunately, it's negative. There's a word of mouth because so many, a lot of people don't go, so they don't have anything yeah, nothing, to say, yeah. you know. So, if I hadn't heard it from Noraida Negron, I mean, I would see, you know. But she was, but she says I can't stop thinking about it because it's such a nice place, and it was That's beautiful. empty. That stuck with me, empty. empty. Well, well, you can think of it as a VIP experience. <laughs> 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 Our marketing manager. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes I like the experience. It makes me feel like they shut the store down for me. <laughs> okay. Now we'll, we'll continue sharing. Really, I think that that's one of the things that really concerns me with, the, with regard to this. And I know that the city you know, has a lot of, a lot of an investment in there, and I would hate for it to not to do well. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Moving to the oh. service coordinator report, Ms. Veronica Gamboa. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Well, my report's on page 10. Um, I will be highlighting, of course, they're starting already our uh, sister cities for 2019, um, already getting together with Hispanic International to review our, our exhibitors and try at least to bring three new products to to this festival because we know that we have our constants, that we have things that you know people are, are seeking every year, but we also want to bring that fresh new product that you know innovates and people want to keep on coming back to, to see what we, we have every year. Uh, so that's what we're trying, you know, figuring it out and, and trying to see. You know, obviously space is, is where we are also like as the Birdie Festival are a cap at 200 exhibit spaces. Mm -hmm. But we, we just, you know, we're, we're figuring th things out to see if maybe we give less spaces to a certain products that might, you know, could consolidate into two or one space and, and have those two. Yeah, because I noticed that you have, they have more than one product, the same thing, like the blouse, the Mexican blouses. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's about how many spaces for that? And I know that there's yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. uh, interest, you know. We actually cut the number of, like for example, uh, two, three years ago, we would have five vendors with blouses. Mm -hmm. Last year, <coughs> got cut down to maybe two. Um, so we're trying to have <coughs> a cap on, of the same product, like not more than two or three of the same product, uh, so that we can bring more of the newer um, vendors that we haven't had <coughs> yet. So because, as, as Veda mentioned, we have a cap, so we need to get creative in terms of how we rearrange everybody. So yeah, instead of having, because it was a whole family that, yes. that brought the, 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 yes. the blouses Definitely. and all that. So we said, okay, only two can come from this family, and only one can come from this one, and just to make sure we don't have, we don't end up with ten, and we can't get any new products in. So yeah, we definitely we're that that we're we're two on the same. Two or three track. the most. Yes. I think we show, a we lot show. of interest. We, you know, yeah. a big variety. Uh, we've been, you've ever had before. Yeah, yeah, we've been we've been working on, and especially we also have. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have a certain criteria if the vendor is not selling so much. We also, even because it's not beneficial, we've done that study where if they don't sell at least 1500 it doesn't come out for the tra travel, for the expense, as well as for, you know, the booth fee. So we're trying to make it, you know, profitable for, for the vendor, for the city, because they do report their taxes back to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, that's, that's good. To that's good too. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah, we're working on it. Good. So um, then, also, I mean, working with um, well, this this month has been very busy for the service team. We've been working with, uh, of course, Austin's legislative uh, services, where you know the gifts that we we, we present um, at our legislative trips. As well, we're starting <coughs> our Washington trip, and I've been working with Palenque for our Laredo Day reception over there. Um, and also, you know, decorations and all that, and that entitles all the logistics. So we're, we're working on that. <laughs> well, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I, I'd like to, to highlight from Beto's report is uh, the visit of Cynthia Drake. Yes. Uh, 
she posted and, and followed Cynthia Drake around the city. So she's a travel writer. She was on assignment for uh, Texas Travel, which is our state uh, visitor guide. And she was also here uh, on assignment by the <coughs> Texas Birding Association. So she had a, a great time here. She had um, good food, and she was able to uh, certainly see some of the the best that we have to offer. And yes, and she actually wanted to come back to mm -hmm. to Laredo to do uh, culinary, culinary. Mm -hmm. uh, a piece on culinary. There was another chef that came with Pete uh, Mims. Yes, mm -hmm. and he called Margarita mm -hmm. that they wanted to go to Casa mm -hmm. to look, you know, because I mean that's. The crown jewel of mm -hmm. historic homes in Laredo mm -hmm. yes. that are in continually that have been lived in you know, yeah. since inception. Yes. So he was there, and it's going to be um, on Amazon. They they featured that show on Amazon. We had contact with them. It was just a, the price that they were asking from the city was like half of our budget. But this guy is a Top chef in New York. Yes, he's, 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 he's very he successful. Goes all over there, he's been here. He was uh, in the Dining with George experience last year for WBCA. So that, that was a contact. And it's a show that's on Amazon. And it's a, it, they specialize on culinary historic yes. um, recipes and historic meals and, and food. And so he was, the chef was really interested in, in coming to Loretta. So I'm glad that he found a, a, a way of um, finding sponsorships to be able to, yes, he did. to come to <coughs> see because did. it's really, really a good, a good product. Well, you know, a lot of the times, you know, we, we never find out about these things, you know, unless you know you had direct contact with somebody that was there, or, you know, was called, mm -hmm. you know, but I think that we were missing a little bit here. Yes. Um, and, Cynthia did get to meet Lalo, and we went to on a on a tour. We we actually had to go um at the Casa Ortiz. We get to saw, see the museum as well as a uh, WBCA museum as well. So I mean, she, we did a lot of the history. Getting into the local culture. Exactly. So she's she's she works for several publications. In this case, she was uh, um, commissioned for for Texas Travel, but she does uh, work with other publications like Texas Highways. And so she was really interested in coming back and doing another piece on culinary. So After we take her back. To her to <laughs> girl and Lain Bia. And Lain Bia. To her to 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 Lain Bia. With the Laredo Vultures Association, they're going to bring their conference, their 360 conference, to La Posada um, in the first week of March. So they're, they're they're all set to come, and we're working with them. So I don't know if you have any other questions on my report. Thank you very much for the report. Thank you, Thank you Veronica. Moving on to the U.S. and Mexico marketing report, Serena Villas. Good morning, if you report on the next page, it's mm -hmm. on page 11, and then you can go ahead and see all my activity and our, our media placements, but um, I just want to go ahead and highlight that we do currently have an RFP out for your, our U.S. tourism campaign rebranding. Um, we um, working together with Eileen. Um, we've come up with, um, with a proposal that, that we put out there to the public. And uh, we have several um, agencies throughout Texas that um, that have um, have received our, our proposal, and um, that should close in about the next within the next ten days uh, to go ahead and see what what it is that, that comes in and how it is that that we can go ahead and refresh our look, just be a little more up to date in regards to the themes, to our logo, um, kind of just you know see what's next after, you know, being on the edge. I think that was a campaign that did really well for us, but it's just time for, for a little refresher. And um, after having that meeting with Webb County Heritage, um, you know, we are going to be incorporating some of the print collateral with the new look and, you know, to promote um, the, the amenities that, that Margarita and, and staff have to offer there too. So it's going to kind of go ahead and kind of round I out everything. I think that everything. we missed a lot in doing the promotion for, for our 
for right. his, the historical aspect of our community, you know, because mm -hmm. we are one of the oldest cities, and not only in Texas, but in the United States. Mm -hmm. exactly. And, you know, we need to be able to, you know, let it, you know, you know, expound on it and, you know, advertise that, you know, people like this history. Just to give you a, a background on the conversation, we are working together with Hope County Heritage on a program so we can feature um, our historic uh, venues, places, and, and everything history from the Port Laredo. And so we're working together with Web County Heritage on that. And part of the question with the Executive Director at the Texas Historical Commission is uh, how can we get additional funding, any grants or any, any programs where we can add to what we are doing uh, from our budget and enhance that a little bit more. So that is part also of the rebranding is now all the new features and we want to include that as, as uh, part of our campaign. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <coughs> Any questions for Selena? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving over to the Digital Marketing Coordinator Report with Ana Reina Asad. <laughs> uh, good morning, my report is in page uh, 12. And you can find the uh, social media statistics and website statistics on the other page. Uh, we're working um, most uh, of the time for the uh, Embaxter TV crew. They're coming from Monterrey to Laredo to uh, promote the, most of the WBCA uh, events for the uh, Monterrey market. Um, That's good. Yeah, we want to promote uh, all the events and the parks, so we went to the, uh, and the nightlife of Laredo. Of Laredo. Right. Food trucks, um, the, the two food truck parks that we have, um, the new restaurants, new restaurants okay. parks. Any businesses there's, um, mm -hmm. that are opening? Um, most of them are bars out there. I need to be, I need to read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They're, they haven't opened officially yet, but we have them. We have a list of, of places that, um, as soon as they open, and we have a TV crew, yes. we include them in the list. So definitely the next, uh, backstage is here every six months. We contract with them for two shows every six months. <coughs> and so in the next next time they come, we hope that all, yeah. all the bars are already open and it's definitely definitely something that we want to feature. I think it's the way I see it, you know, that because they all seem to be congregating and be opening on good reading, or as they call it, it's, 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 it's you know, that um, I see like, you know, people going into one bar, not having to get in their vehicles or like little park, no bar parking. There yeah. are, you know, and it's mm -hmm. one of the features that I think that is mm -hmm. interesting about that yeah. uh, area. And having like on the rocks already there as a an anchor, I would say, because it's a well-known um, venue. Mm -hmm. It's going to help that that business. And Siete Banderas is also then they're doing a lot of advertising also mm -hmm. for their. They're still open for the night line. Yeah, yeah, for their, yeah. 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 right. And I want to say they're, I have seen their advertisements and they're That's trying right. really hard. It's like $3 they drinks really, all night, they $4 really dollar dollar drinks all night. They, they want to really, yeah. you know, make it and hopefully they put it well. So it's a beautiful building. It's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. And the ambience is so pretty. I mean, you yeah. go upstairs, you can have all the, you know, you can see all of the rain. The you can touch the stars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How many you have? <laughs> been our focus for our Mexican campaign in the last couple of years at Laredo's more than shopping. We know that they identify us with shopping now. Mm -hmm. Transportation. Exactly. Yes. What what else is there to do? I'm done with my shopping. What, what about Playmore? How is it doing? 
We have it's, they were, it's doing good. We yeah. have we feature them during the backstage. Um, They're very cooperative, very friendly, very and, and you know. What we you haven't mean, talked to them about know. business, like how they're doing business wise, but in terms of service, we 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 took the our um, travel agents and our media from October mm -hmm. and October, and they were. October. I mean, we had, had a great. A blast. Yeah. I great yeah. I even played it as man. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're definitely it's one of those attractions we yeah. the every time we have anybody yeah, coming from out of town we're like right. <laughs> featuring. Yeah. It's it's very attractive yeah. to our Mexican market. Yeah, yeah as well as I have been trying to uh, I I will add them to my DT as well to have promotion with the hotels as well as as our locals. And I think because if uh, when families come, I mm -hmm. mean they need yeah. to find something for their kids. kids. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And that's what we want why we wanna feature it. And it ties up with our whole what's there to do after shopping. Mm -hmm. um, and focus. the local parks, or local parks, they have our, another mm -hmm. option for the families, for mm -hmm. kids, uh, mm -hmm. for their pets. For is there any yeah. place that's opening there on like McPherson? What is that going to be? Colombia? Uh, uh, the, the urban, the urban, air. urban trampoline. Or urban something? air. Oh, yeah. Urban oh, right. air. The trampoline park? It's an urban And then the, the new one? The, it's a new the one. food truck park. Right. So like the uh, the one that's there already, but uh, it's it's a m much larger two-story mm -hmm. um, venue. Very nice. It's, it's pretty well known. I think it's a franchise type uh, business um, that they're working to get their permits already. So they probably should be open next couple weeks. We hope. And they actually sure to do for kids. Yeah, I mean, no, they they wanted to be part of the segments. Um, Beatrice did reach out to them to see if they wanted to give us just a little, you know, update on how their construction is going. But um, at the last minute, there was just a change in schedule. But but they're they're open, and I mean they're open to us reaching out to them, and and they're glad that that Beatrice did make that connection with them. So we're looking forward to, to building on on future partnerships. Well, let's just like, I guess as Laredo grows and businesses, you know, start setting up and geared more towards kids, and, yeah. you know, because of this, you know, a lot of people say, what's there to do? And, you know, there's nothing to do. There is. If you, if you now you start seeing more and more businesses that are geared towards I see the Water Museum is also opening <coughs> on the weekends now. So okay. that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. And so we, jokingly, we, we said that we've been backstage and we started working with them eight years ago <coughs> yeah seven eight years ago uh we would struggle to figure things out every six months to show them and now they have a like a running list of every time they have a super packed agenda and they have a waiting list of businesses that they want to feature it's on a promise state. now we're gonna have to put you in next exactly time. we'll, we'll yeah. get you in the in the list for the list it's a good list. problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. it's a great problem to have for us because it shows that Laredo is growing in the offering to the visitor and the attractions that we can have for the visitor. That's great. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you very much for that report. Thank you. Okay, now we have the activities report from our Monterrey office. We yeah. have some land in a few minutes. Okay, morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's a report from uh, just myself and also from Selena Rodriguez. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to highlight uh, a meeting that we have with Alma Barradas. She is the president of Mesa Panamericana. They are about to celebrate their 75th anniversary. It's going to take place in Gran Hotel Ancira in Monterrey. And they're gonna be having associates from different parts from, from Mexico, okay, for, for this anniversary. Like a special occasion for them, they're gonna have a dinner and also, um, Launch on May, and they reach out to us to look for a sponsorship. Okay, but in exchange, we're gonna have the opportunity to promote okay, La Real Texas with all the ladies. It's gonna be around 140, 150 ladies, okay, from Monterrey and different parts from Mexico. And we also going to promote. Well, they are going to promote, and we're gonna help them to promote. As part as part of their celebration, uh, shopping tour to Laredo, Texas. Good. Okay, so she was looking also for a uh, hotel rates. We have already um, requested those rates 
to Fairfield Inn by Marriott. That's the hotel they, they and she chose that she would like to be because of the location it has with yeah, all the lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, we uh, are helping her to uh, give her a, a schedule for different options to go to the shopping. Mm -hmm. And our shop, it's it's in there. Okay, of course. And we're hoping that this uh, shopping tour will take place on, on May, okay? The other thing we worked uh, is uh, with Monterrey Convention and Visitor Bureau. Uh, we want to be very close to them uh, to get the all the events taking place in Monterrey, different concerts, you know, symposiums, um, I don't know, conventions uh, that they have. So we can take a look at them and see the the opportunity to promote with their, you know, with the people from from those events and offer uh, tours to the audience, okay, as part of their social experience. Because when there is an expo or symposium or a conference in Monterey, it could be you know <coughs> doctor, medical, I don't know, different areas. And they know that Monterey is very close um, to the border, in this case, with Laredo, Texas. So, Question. are we offering or are we joining <coughs> for busing, maybe signing people up at that point and say, come to Laredo, there's this tour bus coming in for shopping on this weekend type of thing? Yeah. We are? Yeah. And, and how is that working out? Uh, it's, been, it's been working, um, the, the main issue with, with that, the, the thing we notice is that sometimes they wanna, uh, they don't wanna stay. One day. Yeah, yes. one day. They just wanna uh, back and forth the same day. Okay. We know they do it that way, but we are looking for them, for those groups, to stay at least one night. Mm -hmm. You know, because the tax. Yes. The, the and one of the things that mm -hmm. we okay. do to to try to convince them is we have a promotion that if they stay for at least one night. We pay for half of the bus. Yeah. So if as an incentive. And, that's yeah. as an incentive. and so we're doing that at trick shows. We're doing that at, at yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. With travel mm -hmm. operators. With travel yeah. operators, uh, travel agencies, uh, but with Monterey Convention and Business Bureau, uh, we, we work very close to see which events, mainly, uh, you know, ladies, ladies events, <laughs> ladies <laughs> events, that once they're in Monterey, yeah. there's always one like, hey, we are really close to Laredo, and yeah. we would like to make a trip, a, a shopping tour, and that's where we, that's where Casa Laredo appears, okay, and try to l lure them, you know, to come <laughs> here and that's very smart, yeah, yeah, of course, do a shopping tour, but with keeping in mind, uh, our main goal is to, so, so they can stay at least one night, mm -hmm. okay, one night, and we help them as Eileen already said with that incentive, and also providing tips to which uh, stores they can visit and get the most uh, advantage of their time. Because these ladies, some when they're in Monterey, you know, they can come any day, okay. But when there is a convention, they come from different parts from Mexico or from you know Guanajuato, San Luis Potosí. Uh, Mexico City, you know, Guerrero, different parts <coughs> of Mexico. But once they are in Monterey, it's attractive for them to do a shopping tour to USA, in this case to Laredo, Texas. Okay. Yeah, that is convenient, I would say. If they're coming mm -hmm. from that far, in, you know, the interior. That yeah. Say. And working with the Monterey <coughs> CDB, they can do the promotion before the conference so that people know and they come prepared and they bring their visas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my next question is this, so if we want them to stay one night, mm -hmm. what hotels are we selecting for them to stay in? Is the hotel involved in maybe assisting with some of these discounts? Uh, the hotel, so the way that we that we work it is we send leads, totally. and this is for yeah. all conventions and all groups. Mm -hmm. Once we have a group, no, well I'm talking about the, the buses, just the overnight shopping. Uh, for the buses what we do is we get rates and it all depends on the group. Some groups have a very specific idea of where they want to stay. Yeah. Like in this case, they want to stay in Fairfield because yeah, it's right next door to, to yeah. the mall. Others want to stay at La Posada because it's right next to the outlet. Others want to stay uh, by Independence Plaza. So they're very specific. If they don't want have a specific hotel in mind, 
we open it to all the hotels and we say we have this group, we have this potential um, business who wants to provide special rates or who wants to come in in the incentives and the hotels respond and depending on that we show it to the customer and we say these are your options depending on your budget. Sometimes they say we want to stay in a super low cost hotel. Yes, yes. Um, they're, very, they're very honest. Because we want, we want to spend our money in shopping. Sometimes they say, no, my group wants to stay at a nice hotel. A little bit uh, uh, Yeah, exactly. So it all depends <laughs> on the group. Yeah. It all depends on the group. And we give them all the options. So we, what we do is we tell them we're a one-stop shop. They don't have to go to every hotel. They don't have to go to every restaurant. They don't have to go to the bus companies. We try to do all that for them so that we sell them the, the whole package. And is it always big buses, or do we do smaller vans, too? Uh, we know there are small bands who come, but we mainly uh, at um, our um, we target big buses. We've done we've done the sprinters a couple of times, but it's not that cost effective. Yeah. So it's for us, it's more cost effect effective to have the the mm -hmm. uh -huh. And sometimes it doesn't need to be the full bus. We've gotten like 30, 35 people, but. Th it's still a, a better deal for us than bringing maybe a couple of sprinters that are going to be twice the cost and for the same amount of people. What, so. what, what age group or what type of people are you all uh, approaching in in Monterrey, like to capture that business? Yeah, into the, the events we assist to promote in Monterrey and within Mexico, it's from different ages, all of the ages. We try to promote, uh, for example, there's Sona Ibida event. Mm -hmm. It was back in September or October. Mm -hmm. I don't recall the, the date exactly, but uh, there was, for example, that that event was uh, mainly youth, youth people, okay? Mm -hmm. From you know, 19, 20 and up. College. Okay. College. College. Yeah. College. There are the ones that want all the, all the fancy tech yeah. the gadgets and so. Mm -hmm. So now you really that focuses on that crowd, on the gamers, on the, um, and those people that want to come culture. here because they want to get the deals. <laughs> oh? Geek. Geek culture. <laughs> <laughs> those techies. <laughs> those techies. <laughs> yeah, because so, like, they know they can get their prices. You here. Know, for, for, for all their gadgets. For the stuff yeah, that they yeah, want. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we have they, have, they get the stuff over there, but it's imported. So it's yeah. a higher price. It's a higher price. So, that's why they want to come so we get we have different different markets, different yeah. targets, and another one, for example, is the logistics business. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on 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 the the market that we're uh, focusing, focusing on. on. I would just recommend that maybe just one night would maybe you could also offer the two nights and three nights because not not everybody would maybe just want to stay one night. Maybe there should be a package for two nights or three nights because okay. that'll allow them to get to know, let's just say Laredo a little more where they can uh, visit historical, uh, which is very much correlated with Mexico. A lot of the culture here in Laredo is tied into mm -hmm. Mexico. We have so that type of package for our logistics, but we, we, we will look into it. Yeah, logistics, they the stay at least two nights. Two weeks. Yeah. That's a three we'll yeah, at least. We, we will certainly mm -hmm. look into expanding that to the Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Samuel, thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Very good. And Samuel is our sales representative for our office in, in Montana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Do we have um, other reports, inquiry reports? Mm -hmm. yes. It's on page 17. <coughs> you'll see it on page 17, you'll have the top inquiry reports <coughs> uh, by country. So France, Canada, obviously the US is the, are the four top ones that appeared in our reports from our inquiries that come in. And then, and then you have down below, it's uh, by state, the top 10. So you have, uh, obviously, the, the biggest one is Texas, um, followed by, um, obviously, uh, New, uh, North Carolina. So you have those. North Carolina. I mean, yes. <laughs> I, I don't, we, these companies, these, these, 
Those are the base. Well, those those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they ink. <laughs> we do have our, our our marketing team works on, on getting some of the. Um, What's uh, the way that it is increase work is we have publications and those publications okay. have uh, a card that you can send the request information from that destination. So it's almost like a catalog at the end of the magazine yes. and it has all the different um, um, destinations that you can visit and you can request information. So this is the, the, the source of, of this report. Yeah, they come from uh, the lead generating publications, where um, and that's how we input them, and we obviously fulfill their the the request, uh, which is our bulk mail, and then it comes. So the inquiries come to you. They come directly. To, well, yes. Well, they usually they come, come to to, to Carmen to my team. Carmen uh, fulfills the inquiries, puts them in her system, and then she takes out the the you know all the labels mm -hmm. and sends them out in in a bulk. Well, there's an email. I mean, depending on the publication, yeah. they have different schedules. Some send a weekly email, or some send a monthly, monthly email. email. Mm -hmm. But they'll they'll let us know, like from mm -hmm. Southern Living, you know, it's a database that comes in, and it's mm -hmm. everyone that's requesting information from either Laredo or from either, you know the state of Texas. And yes. then Carmen's the one who receives all of those and inputs them mm -hmm. into into the system. As far as these inquiries, like let's say you know mm -hmm. France and Canada, do you have a way to to track that that inquiry became a visit? We we don't we have, have. We're no. trying to figure that out because we we currently don't have that. Uh, we do have a lead survey that we've been working for some time that we haven't. We're trying to figure out how to implement it to see those conversions because. Mm -hmm. In our business, it's very difficult to, to track conversions, but we are, we, we were trying to figure out how to do it for this. And uh, for Canada and for France, anything that's outside the U.S., we respond to the, um, the request for information be electronically. Those are one and one. Um, yeah. For the U.S., we do send the, the, the packet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for those, we do it electronically. Yeah, anything so international yes, so will get like a direct email <coughs> from Carmen going, thank you so much for your inquiry. Yeah. Is there anything specifically you're looking for? Because obviously you want to try and cut costs down. So if they want a visitor guide or they just want some information, Carmen will send them a link like, we here's a link to download, here's, you know, information on the maps, here's, you know, just depending. And some will say like, can you please send me something? Then, oh, no problem. We'll go ahead and send it. Instead of sending 418 packets, of course. you know, yeah, we get them. Uh, we do have <coughs> now our new system with IDSS uh, that we just started um, using at the beginning of the fiscal year. That might be able to help us with that conversion uh, tracking. Are the inquiries? We'll keep you. We'll keep you. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are the inquiries coming in in French, like the ones from France? No, it's not. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a set form. It's a, it's a yeah, set form. Okay, it's, yeah. it's their so their so name, their the address, the their okay. publication, and the that, way they come that, in that they refer to. They're in an Excel sheet. It's so basically a yeah. spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. With with uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you send everything in English, like yes. whatever we yes. have, we just send it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Si no le mandas una copia del bajo. <laughs> so Julia and so she we just get names okay. and, and you know it's just ready to information. information and just and wondering because you know sometimes they you know they come in they, they, in Spanish they, or in they, French. They, they, they probably just translate it to us and we just yeah. send it out. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. French is not that good, but no, I'm not yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> 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 We're working on it. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, uh, we wanted to discuss the March dates for our meeting okay. um, because of the Washington legislative trip. So we're going to have three people out um, traveling, so uh, we wanted to discuss the possibility of moving our meeting to the next, the following week, which would be the 14th. Yeah, that would be fine, I guess, everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes? Yes. Do we need a motion? Yeah, we need a motion. A motion. I, move, I move that we uh, 
that we move our March meeting to the 14th instead instead of the 7th. Okay. Second. Second motion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other announcements? Coming up tomorrow. We have to. We have coming up, then we invite everybody. Will be at the Laredo Center for the Arts. So we'll have some, you know, vendors as well, and, and what's that? I'm sorry, didn't get to. Caminate. Oh, okay. That we have every every month. I go every I go every once in a while. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've seen you sometimes. Yeah, so, so yes, yeah. so we'll have our, our kids' corner. We uh, obviously there will be the birds of the brush will be an exhibit, and mm -hmm. there will be. I, I believe it's going to go all the way to, into the March, and we'll mm -hmm. have a closing re re uh, reception for it since it's just so popular and so many. You know, artists come in, so we, we, we think that we <coughs> owe it to extend it to them. Okay, well, that's good. Accommodation. And the birding festival mm -hmm. going on this weekend, and so um, seems like everybody's been very busy with that right now, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. They're, they got great numbers, and so it's going on. There's trips today, tomorrow, and on Saturday, and then they have that closing back with the keynote speaker on Saturday at the American Legion. Where do y'all get the vehicles to transport so many? They rent them. Oh. So we we again this is a this is an event that really transitioned very well from being a CD event to a community <coughs> organized event. And we gave them all the context, all the information, and they rent the vans from um, a car rental company and they have it all figured out. They have their drivers, they have all their, their logistics and, set up, the, the numbers for the vans. And every year, uh, for me, it's really exciting to see every year how they have everything even better, better organized. And so they have a person with the, the checklist, and they have the keys, and the drivers, and they send them out. And this morning, I was checking in people for the breakfast. So I was like, put me wherever you need me. And they're like, breakfast, OK. I was checking in people for breakfast. But they, they're very well organized. So it's an event that really transitioned very, very well. Wow. What a success. Good. Mm -hmm. Good one. Thank you. I move that we uh, adjourn. Madam mm -hmm. Chair? I'll second that. If y'all don't want to go, we can keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Stay here. We're <laughs> having such a good time. <laughs> 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 I think we should. It's very nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. Okay.